So, President of today's function, Dr. K.K. Thomas, uh, Honorable Vice Chancellor, uh, Dr. Professor M. R. Shachindrana, sir, all the learned delegates, participants, and uh, my dear students, good afternoon to you all. Now, we are all in the midst of this uh, COVID-19 pandemic outbreak. And uh, this novel coronavirus has brought panic as well as it caused complete halt of all the activities, including the travel and tourism, travel and tourism, then the trade and the commerce, the school and the college education, and even the regular things like going into a supermarket or uh, eating outside or going for a cinema, everything has been suspended. So at this juncture, the zoonosis and the commemoration of the zoonosis day is gaining more importance. So I would like to congratulate the whole team behind the organizing this uh, international webinar, the IVA Kerala Manuti College Unit, as well as the Meat Technology Unit and the Association of Meat Scientists and Technologies for organizing such an international webinar. So with this, let me enter into my topic. My topic is emerging zoonosis, the catastrophic storm of microbial threat. So I know you may be knowing the definition of zoonosis and uh, just to refresh your memory, the zoonosis are the diseases or the infection that are naturally transmitted between vertebrate animals and humans. So I would like to underline the term naturally transmitted because only those diseases will be considered under this particular heading zoonosis. And this particular term is um, coined by the great scientist Rudolf Virchow. That means uh, this has been derived from two words, Greek words, zoon, that means animal, and gnosis means diseases. So there are so many important word uh, terms associated with the zoonosis, and the, there are so many classifications also of zoonotic diseases, and this is the most important one. Anthropozoonosis, this is the, um, this, uh, in this particular term, uh, the primary reservoir host is the animal, and from the animal, the disease gets transmitted to human beings, that is anthropozoonosis. And majority of the diseases comes under this particular group, including your rabies, your brucellosis, your anthrax, and all. Then the, another important term is zooanthroponosis. That means the primary reservoir host is man. And from man, the disease gets transmitted to animals. And uh, this includes the human tuberculosis caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis and the diphtheria caused by cornebacterium diphtheria. Then at another group is amphithenosis. That means the transmission occurs in a bi-directional way. So the primary reservoir host can be a man or it can be the animal. And the disease transmits from animal to man or man to animal. So this is, uh, these are the three important terms associated with the zoonosis. And as this is uh, rightly pointed out, there are so many infectious agents affecting man, about uh, more than 14, 15 pathogenic agents affecting man, of which 61% are considered as zoonosis or uh, having animal origin. And there are more than 175 emerging diseases 75% of them are having the animal origin or are considered as zoonosis. So we'll see what is emerging zoonosis because nowadays so many diseases are emerging. And this emerging zoonosis, it, actually these diseases can be produced by a newly identified agent. Or it is not necessary that it should be by a new agent. It can be by a previously known agent occurring in a particular area or occurring in particular host for the first time. So that are, these are the emerging zoonosis. And this, there is another important term, re-emerging. And all these emerging and the re-emerging diseases have received increased attention since the end of 20th century. So the re-emerging from the word itself, you can make out the re-emerging. That means it was present in the previous years and were absent for a long period and then re-emerged. 
and always whenever there is re-emergence it will be in a more more pathogenic form the best example is the dengue fever the dengue fever was there in 1950s and 1960s and all and after a long period in 1990s it re-emerged and the re-emergence was always in the pathogenic form that means the dengue hemorrhagic fever and dengue shock syndrome all the patients it won't produce this highly pathogenic form there is one particular phenomenon called as antibody dependent enhancement that is a d e antibody dependent enhancement that means you know the dengue uh, serotypes there are four different serotypes then one then two then three and then four suppose a person is affected with a den one the antibodies will be produced against den one it is of paka monoclonal nature it won't protect against the other zero type not only that it won't protect against the other zero type it will activate or stimulate the infection with the other zero type so what will happen if the same patient is affected with the another zero type always the infection occurs in a very severe form and may lead to the high severe virulent form of dengue hemorrhagic fever or dss dengue shock syndrome and it causes severe mortality that particular phenomenon is called as ade antibody dependent enhancement now there are so many factors associated with the emergence of the diseases so this can be in in broad it is classified under four headings that is the microbial determinant that means factors associated with the microbial agent it can be the mutations or the evolution or uh, the um, uh, antigeny you know antigenic shift antigenic drift and the organisms are attaining more and more virulent due to the changes in the genetic makeup then the individual host determinant include the lack of immunity the behavioral changes the changes in the dietary pattern all this included under the individual host determinant and always i used to say in my class and all the organisms are attaining resistance at a very faster rate and in the same phase the human individual is reducing their resistance then the next point is the host population determinant this include the emigration the migration the increase in the transportation the urban crowding and all and the fourth is the environmental determinant the ecological changes brought about by the human activities and um, we know now it is covid 19 and there are so many microorganisms are the which may emerge due to the degradation that we have made to the planet and to the natural environment so we can consider it as really really man made activities are responsible for the occurrence of very many diseases now from this picture you can make out the diseases shared between the human and the wildlife this include the lyme disease the monkey pox the hanta virus ebola and all and the diseases shared between human and the domesticated animals this include the bsc that is the mad cow disease then the escherichia coli cow pox rift valley fever and all and there are diseases which are shared between all that means the human the wildlife and the domesticated species which include the rabies west nile fever and the list that list goes on so there are two important terms in association with this that is the spillover and spillback spillover means the infectious agents will be there in the domesticated species and from the domesticated animals the disease gets transmitted to the wildlife and in uh, vice versa spillback is from the wild the diseases gets transmitted to the domesticated species now this uh, i have included few pictures uh, just to attain uh, your attention means for the factors associated with the occurrence of emerging and the reemerging zoonosis so this is the overcrowding pakka overcrowding and the um, population growth so there is a exponential increase in the population human population which is the major reason for the occurrence of uh, uh, zoonotic diseases and also the overcrowding you can notice the overcrowding in this picture 
and another important factor is the close contact of human livestock population so there is close interaction between animals and human beings nowadays and it is not the case in villages this is the picture from a village in vietnam and it is not only in the villages it is there in the in the developed countries even also in the urban areas and actually especially in the developed countries and all there is close intimacy between the pet animals and the human beings and they can't even think of not having a pet at their house so that much interaction is there which is another reason for the occurrence of the zoonotic diseases and this is the advancement of transportation because of the development in the technology advancement in transportation in 1922 this is around the world for just for moving around the world it have taken 80 days and now it is reduced to 8 hours in 2016 so you can just see the picture how well it is connected the well connection between the continent between the countries between the states and all so that is another reason and and then next is the import and export of animals their products and by products actually there are um these laws and the rules and regulations regarding the import and export and all but we, even with that there occur illegal transport of uh, many type of the animals as well as the products and all and so this uh, because of this improvement in the transportation facilities it is not only the human and animals are happy or also the microorganisms that can travel from one area to the another so that is another important factor and this is the changes in genetic makeup of the pathogen so this uh, this is another important factor we have seen the influenza virus the antigenic drift and the antigenic shift that is happening and very recently a particular virus uh, called g4 g4 virus actually that is the g4 genotype 4 and actually it is g4 ea swine flu swine influenza virus so g stands for genotype genotype 4 ea means euro asian avian type swine flu swine influenza virus so that is the emerging virus that is seen in china and it is said that it is highly pathogenic so the genetic makeup regular change in the genetic makeup of the organisms is happening and that is the another reason for the emergence of the organisms and nowadays the one of the burning issue that we are facing globally throughout the globe is the antimicrobial resistance the organisms are attaining resistance to the common antibiotics or the antimicrobial agents at a very faster pace and that is why we are facing difficulty in treating with the infectious diseases now there are so many organisms including your tb tuberculosis organism the multi drug resistant then the extra drug resistant tuberculosis then the methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus then dt104 that is the strain of resistant strain of salmonella salmonella type murium like that so many organisms are attaining resistance and that is another important reason amr then this is the bioterrorism the microorganisms are used as a chosen weapon for the um, uh, for the biological war that is the bioterrorism biological weapon or bio war and the best example is the anthrax you might have heard about the parcel anthrax parcels which was sent to destroy the human population and um, so that is the bioterrorism and then the ecological changes the environmental changes brought about by the human activities and that is another important reason for the occurrence of the uh, emergence of the diseases and this is the unplanned and underplanned urbanization the moving the people are moving towards the urban that means the cities and that is causing unplanned and underplanned urbanization which is another important reason for the occurrence of the diseases then see the condition of this particular water body how unhygienic it is this is the situation in many many parts of the globe poor sanitation and um, uh, we can we can uh, think how uh, unsafe it is and it is uh, it is the reason for the occurrence of the diseases now this is the picture showing the top countries without sanitation and in that they have mentioned about the absence of sanitary latrines 
and um, actually throughout the globe about 40 percentage of people are not having a sanitary latrine many of people are don't know how to use a sanitary latrine and all and this figure actually 8 18 million people in india now it has changed a lot now it has improved a lot because of that such barrier so this figure is before that so now in india the condition has uh, has improved a lot this is again the picture from 2001 to 11 and this also have improved so these dark shaded areas um, are uh, the places where there is poor poor sanitation for the absence of uh, this um, latrine sanitary latrines and now the condition has improved a lot in india there is no doubt about that this is the picture showing how it is transmitted so you can see the fecal matter Fecal matter it gets uh, the uh, it contaminates the food materials through the um, uh, flies uh, through the hands through the fields through the sanitary water and all the um, it contaminates the um, uh, food and then the food through that food again the uh, organisms are uh, discharged through the um, uh, through the feces so here you can see the barriers uh, so the toilet barrier which will help to prevent the contamination of the fields and water bodies and all and the safe water the sanitation of the water it will help to um, control the disease uh, reaching to the food materials the agents reaching to the materials and also the hygiene and hand washing barrier so this is the, this is the how we can control this particular um, mode of transmission of the infectious agent then this uh, this picture shows the inadequate public health infrastructure in many many parts of the globe this is the situation inadequate public health infrastructure and this uh, shows the deforestation that is another important reason for the ecological imbalance that is brought about again by the human activities the human made activities and failure to control carriers or breakdown in water and sanitation system here, yeah, see, you can see the channeling of funds to other problems. Actually, there's um, many, many diseases, uh, diseases are arising. And um, since the beginning of the 20th century, more people died due to the zoonotic diseases than any of the wars, including the world war. And so we have to do something to channel funds for the control of the zoonotic diseases otherwise the death mortality rate will be much much higher due to the zoonotic diseases this is again a picture showing the important emerging re-emerging diseases and one particular disease that is shown in black that is the uh, that is uh, uh, that is the anthrax bioterrorism that is deliberately emerging that means the anthrax organisms which is used as a chosen weapon for the bioterrorism so these are the um, these um, blue uh, uh, red shaded areas are the newly emerging diseases and blue shaded are the re-emerging diseases uh, so you can see the rift valley fever the ebola hemorrhagic fever the drug resistant malaria mrsa and all are the re-emerging and the newly emerging are the um, e coli o157 and 7 and all now these are the pathogens showing upward trend and the other side it is the downward trend so this first is the covid 19 i have put a question mark because uh, the um, uh, this uh, pathogen now also it is uh, the uh, this um, uh, intermediate agents are not identified so covid 19 the role of um, the role of bats and this um, it is uh, it is under question then the, there are Zika, Zika virus, you know, then the Ebola, the MERS, uh, coronavirus, swine flu, H1N1, avian influenza, H5N1, then the SARS, um, uh, the severe acute respiratory syndrome, then West Nile fever, Nipah virus, KFD, CCHF, that is Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever, bovine spongiform encephalopathy, E. coli O157H7, AIDS, Marburg, cholera, Rift Valley fever, Antivirus and dengue fever, these are all showing upward trend and the downward trend, the smallpox, it is eradicated. It is eradicated. Then the poliomyelitis, measles, leprosy, neonatal tetanus, 
guinea worm disease and yours your these are all the diseases showing the downward trend this is again showing the emerging infectious diseases so you can see the areas were at a highly highly prevalent or the bigger bubble shows the high prevalence of those emerging infectious diseases and uh, more than 335 emerging infectious diseases are identified between 1940 to 2004 so again emerging diseases include the covid-19 the nipah virus crimean congo hemorrhagic fever the list is uh, very far vast and i have included only few diseases the ebola virus the zika virus then the marburg disease lassa fever then uh, middle east respiratory syndrome then uh, severe acute respiratory syndrome rift valley fever and chikungunya re-emerging diseases include the west nile fever dengue disease malaria avian influenza and cholera and these are the parasitic zoonoses again emerging include the cryptosporidiosis, toxoplasmosis, echinococcosis, cystisarcosis, and the re-emerging include the leishmaniosis caused by the leishmania donovani, and the emerging foodborne zoonosis. These are the list of foodborne emerging zoonosis, including the Escherichia coli O157H7 serotype, then the Listeria monocytogenes, multi-drug resistant Salmonella typhimurium DT104. Then Vibrio vulnificus, Cryptococcus parasanguinis, Campylobacter species, and Cryptosporidium parvum. So now, so the, this is in general about, and now uh, let me enter into the individual diseases. Only the, in, in short, I have included few diseases. Uh, first is the Ebola virus, Ebola viral disease, and the family is the Phyloviridae. And uh, the Phyloviridae, this particular family includes three genera, that is the Cuba virus, Marburg virus, and the Ebola virus. This is the typical structure of the uh, Ebola virus. History of outbreak includes first identified in 1976, the Ebola disease, notified in March of uh, 2014, and largest outbreak from 2014 to 2016. In 2017, and 2019 outbreak in Congo, Africa, and in July 2019, the WHO declared this particular disease as a world health emergency. So this is uh, the Ebola, Ebola hemorrhagic fever, the typical appearance, it is, that is why it is called as a shepherd road due to its thread-like shape. And about five different strains are there, that is the Zaire, Bundi Bugio, Sudan type, then Thai forest virus and Reston. Among this, the Sire is the most pathogenic um, uh, variety and Reston is considered comparatively as not pathogenic to man. And the first three are more uh, prevalent um, among, the, uh, among the people. So the major reservoirs include the fruit bat. And the wild animals includes uh, several monkey species, chimpanzees, gorillas, baboons, and all, and other animals. And man also gets affected with this uh, Ebola hemorrhagic fever. And the transmission is mainly by the direct contact. Direct contact and also the indirect contact with the surface and the material, contaminated surface and material. Then attending the burial ceremonies, that is another important source of the infection and the hypodermic needles being reused in the treatment of patients and rarely the inhalation can happen and that usually occurs from pigs to the primates and again sexual transmission is the sexual transmission and um, through the breast milk also the this particular ebola virus gets uh, transmitted through the secretions and the excretions the organisms get transmitted uh, and um, uh, this is the bush meat. This is the delicacy in Africa, which is considered as one of the important souls of this particular um, organism. That uh, that uh, this um, organism, and this this is the typical symptom. You can see the bleeding from the mouth and the natural orifices. This occurs in the later stage. In the beginning, there will be the general symptoms like the nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, red eyes, rays, rash, and chest pain and all stomach pain and there will be bleeding usually from the eyes and the bruising which can cause mortality and this is another picture showing this um, uh, the first symptoms and uh, towards the final stages 
you can see the hemorrhages that is happening and uh, from day to seven to nine day 10 day 11 and day to a loss of consciousness seizures massive internal bleeding and death occurs in case of ebola hemorrhagic fever from the name itself you can make out the hemorrhage is the most important symptom and this is regarding the prevention avoid contact with the bats and non-human primates or blood fluids and raw meat prepared from this animal wear appropriate ppe then isolate patients with ebola from other patients and avoid direct contact with the bodies of people who, who have died of ebola so this is the picture showing the destruction of the infected house so that's about the ebola in short and um, now let me enter into another important disease that is the nipah virus uh, family pyramid so viridae nipah disease nipah viral disease genus henipa virus and it is related to the hentra virus hentra virus so about the history this particular disease first reported in 1998 to 1999 in peninsular malaysia were 1.1 million pigs were culled in that particular outbreak in order to avoid the contamination in order to avoid the um, contagious uh, to avoid the transmission to the other species and all the mass culling of pigs uh, was done and about in that particular outbreak 265 persons hospitalized and mostly adult male and farmers and 105 deaths uh, also happened 40 percent then the in singapore again there was a mild attack of the uh, nipah viral disease in 1999 Pigs imported from Malaysia. That was the reason the pigs imported from Malaysia. And outbreak in abattoir workers, 22 infected, and only one that was reported in that particular outbreak. And again in 2004 in Bangladesh, Faridpur district of Bangladesh, about 34 human cases and 26 deaths had happened. Then 2005 in Bangladesh again. Tangai, Tangail district, 44 total cases and 12 deaths were reported in that particular outbreak and the source was the contaminated palm fruit juice. In uh, now coming to India, 2001 and 2007, the uh, disease had occurred in West Bengal. The first in 2001, about 66 cases were there and 45 deaths. And in 2007, 50 suspected cases and 5 deaths were reported in West Bengal. Then again in Kerala 2018, so we have seen that particular uh, outbreak, Kolkata and Malapuram district in May 17, deaths were reported and over 2,000 were quarantined in that particular outbreak. Again in 2019, luckily only one case was reported in Ernangulam district in Kerala and we could control our health department and other departments in collaboration with we could control the particular disease in a very effective manner and the reservoirs uh, these are the reservoirs the fruit bats and because of its peculiar um, I mean, its appearance of it is also called as the flying foxes and it carry the virus are not affected and virus found in the urine and also in the partially eaten food which is the important um, uh, important agent for the transmission of this uh, disease and um, in malaysia and singapore mainly by the direct contact or contact with the body fluids the transmission occurs in bangladesh and india the consumption of the contaminated fruits and the food juices were the reason and person to person transmission through the contact with secretions and excretions can also happen and also the nosocomial transmission that remains the hospital bone transmission can also occur in case of the uh, nipah viral disease human illness the incubation period is 3 to 14 days fever and headache will be there and uh, this uh, encephalitis can happen with the symptoms of dizziness uh, drowsiness vomiting seizures and it can aim it may progress to coma in 24 to 48 hours and there is chance for the respiratory difficulty, hypertension, and tachycardia. Now, coming to the disease in animals, pigs highly contagious and maybe sometimes, uh, most of the cases, the pigs remains uh, asymptomatic. Sometimes there will be acute fever and severe respiratory disease, and there will be a characteristic cough. It is a harsh bark, and it is that's why it's called as the 
barking pig syndrome or one mile cup and there will be neurological changes uh, there will be head pressing agitation aggression and but comparatively the disease causes low mortality i have my aunt uh, uh, but uh, in order to prevent the outbreak of the disease uh, the mass culling of the animals are carried out and this is the picture uh, that was uh, that uh, happened in uh, that okay in that particular outbreak and this is the uh, photos from the kerala outbreak we could control the disease in a very effective manner due to, due to the collaboration with the uh, with the different um, the departments they act together and this um, with the health minister uh, shrimati uh, and uh, and also this is the picture of that uh, uh, nurse uh, who who succumbed to that uh, and uh, uh, this is the photos from the kerala outbreak nipah outbreak and this is uh, for the this uh, particular picture is uh, bats they are catching the bird uh, this bats the veterinarians are uh, very actively involved in that particular outbreak for the control or for the prevention and control of the disease that's about in short about uh, nipah viral disease and next is the zika virus zika virus is considered as a close cousin of dengue and chikungunya and uh, the history first isolated from the monkeys in the sika forest in uganda in 1947 and the large outbreak occurred in the south pacific islands first human case was reported in 1952 so the zika virus infection uh, actually this um, uh, this uh, remains uh, asymptomatic in most of the cases uh, out of uh, out of five cases four remains asymptomatic but the major problem is it uh, transmitted it, it, there, there is intrauterine transmission and the fetus may get affected that is the major um, problem with the zika virus so anyone who is living in or traveling to an area with zika virus is at risk of infection including the pregnant woman and the joy of pregnancy has given a way to fear because it remains asymptomatic in mothers but may get transmitted to the fetus and can cause severe problem uh, severe problems uh, that, that is why the it, it has become a fear among the pregnant brazilians in about four fifths of the cases zika um, causes no noticeable symptoms so women have no idea whether they have contracted it during pregnancy and this is uh, the, the uh, environmental suitability for zika virus it shows the um, presence of this uh, uh, mosquito aedes aegypti and um, so these are the areas where the, the which is more prone to the occurrence of this disease and so this particular uh, shows the root map first originated in uh, uganda 1947 and then in senegal 1988 then Gabon 1975 from the earth to malaysia then cambodia and uh, in uh, brazil in 2015 brazil from the earth to mexico then texas and all the diseases get transmitted so the mode of transmission is bite from an infected mosquito especially the aedes aegypti aedes aegypti it is also called as a tiger mosquito because of the dark lines that is present on the legs and the body and um, the risk stands for the maternal fetal uh, maternal to fetal transmission through the intrauterine as well as the perinatal that is why the pregnant ladies are, um, are getting scared about this disease and also the risk stands for sexual transmission so in brazil Health ministry officials advised against pregnancy until 2019. The, the, the government itself banned becoming the pregnancy and until 2018 in order to avoid the problems in the fetus and also the laboratory exposure, the resistance, and also the blood transfusion, organ and tissue transplant. So Zika virus transmission cycle, this is the symptoms, uh, fever, um, rashes, uh, the joint pain and conjunctivitis person infected with men transmit the disease to the fetus and also this is uh, the, this shows the transmission cycle what are the symptoms of sika as i told about one in five people infected with sika will get sick only one that means the asymptomatic um, form of the disease is there in many many and the illness is usually mild for this reason many people might not realize they have been infected 
and the symptoms typically begin two to seven days after being bitten by an infected mosquito. Symptoms include the common symptoms like the fever, rashes, pink eye, then pain in joints, pain behind the eyes, then headache, muscle pain, microcephaly, miscarriage, stillbirth, and other birth defects. And this is another important syndrome that can happen in case of uh, this, uh, uh, this Zika infection and uncommon sickness of nervous system in which a person on immune system damages the nerve cells causing muscle weakness and sometimes the paralysis that is what is called as the Gillen barry syndrome and this is one of the important sequelae of the Zika disease and many diseases this is one of the sequelae like the Campylobacter and tar. And this is why this is the typical microcephaly it is seen in the, um, in the newborn. So Brazil has already seen 4,000 cases of microcephaly. Microcephaly can occur more babies. Brain has not developed properly on pregnancy and has uh, stopped growing after, uh, after birth. So here you can see the typical appearance of the head. Uh, the, the, the brain gets a huge size. So this is the typical appearance of microcephaly. And this is one of the important sequelae or important uh, symptoms that can happen in the newborn uh, due to this Zika virus infection. The diagnosis from the history and the symptoms and the molecular techniques and so on. And what can people do to prevent becoming infected with Zika? There is no vaccine to prevent Zika, but the studies are going on and avoid traveling. To... Pardon? Dr. Irshad, is it clear? Avoid traveling to infected countries. The best way to prevent diseases. Clear only, madam. It is clear only. Okay. The best way to prevent diseases spread by mosquitoes is to avoid being bitten. Protect yourself uh, and your family from mosquito bites by wearing long sleeved shirts and long pants. Stay in places with air conditioning or that window and door screens to keep the mosquitoes away and also use mosquito repellent. Researchers are exploring ways to develop vaccine and um, world's first Zika virus vaccine was developed, we can be proud of, it was in India by Bharat Biotech International Limited in Hyderabad. They have developed an inactivated vaccine using recombinant, and recombinant DNA vaccine and animals and human test trials are going on. So that's about the Zika in short and the next is the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome. MERS, MERS or camel flu and it is caused by the coronavirus, it's a potential pandemic agent first reported in September 2012 at Jordan. Total cases at that time 1733 and 629 deaths in 2015. Case fatality rate is about 50 to 60 percentage and 2016 again the outbreak had happened 88 reported cases and 22 mortality reported in that particular outbreak that is the MERS Middle East Respiratory Syndrome which is considered as a close cousin of SARS severe acute respiratory syndrome and here the reservoir host are the dromedary dromedary Carol. Maya is it clear Maya is it clear Yes, madam, ma it, it is clear, clear, madam. Okay, okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh -huh. And uh, it, is, uh, it is having a uh, very good uh, resemblance with the batch coronavirus. This uh, MERS coronavirus have got a good resemblance with the batch coronavirus. And the transmission is in this Hello? Transmission is in this so way, direct or indirect transmission. Hello? Pardon, Maya, is it clear? Maya, is it clear? Uh, yes, yes, madam. Uh, okay. In between your voice, and so I thought it is not clear at all. Okay, so camel raising, then the camel food products, through the camel food products, the camel milking, camel honor conduct. So that is direct or indirect transmission can happen. Indirect conduct can cause the transmission of this particular Mm, disease and human to human transmission also can happen especially in the hospitals and the households then the contact by contact and also airborne that is the middle east respiratory syndrome 
the clinical manifestations in man include the incubation period is 5 to 14 days and asymptomatic to severe pneumonia many many cases it may remain asymptomatic and sometimes there will be very severe asymptomatic form of the disease with fever chills sore throat myalgia dyspnea pneumonia and multi organ failure one in four uh, patients uh, show gastrointestinal symptoms in this particular mers middle east respiratory syndrome so an orthopox virus based vaccine reduces the excretion in mers coronavirus infection in dromedary camels and lot of research is going on in this particular uh, in this particular area so that is in short about mers middle east respiratory syndrome now let me pass on to another disease important hemorrhagic fever that is the crimean congo hemorrhagic fever that is the cchf cchf so here it is the nero virus under the bunia viridae family and the disease was first described in crimea former ussr in 1944 and in 1956 in congo that is why it is called as the crimean congo hemorrhagic fever and the hosts are the wild animals domesticated animals and birds and the vector is the hyloma tick this is the typical picture of the hyloma tick and the transmission can occur through contact also but it is major 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 team occurs through the bite of the tick this is the geographical di distribution of this crimean congo hemorrhagic fever especially in africa and also in the asian countries and this is the typical picture showing the clinical manifestation of this particular disease with fever myalgia dizziness and the general symptoms like neck pain stiffness and all and there will be hepatomegaly and petechiae rashes rashes that is the very common symptoms in case of cchf congo hemorrhagic fever now coming to the disease the most uh, important disease covid 19 we are uh, there is one spelling mistake pandemic it is the n is missing in this particular Uh, pandemic covid 19 pandemic we are in the midst of this uh, covid 19 pandemic and uh, this is the typical picture of that virus so covid 19 is an infectious disease caused by sars corona virus 2 and enveloped single stranded rna virus it's a member of the beta so actually there are four different varieties alpha beta gamma and delta of which the beta corona virus is the pathogenic one uh, first affecting the man and the animals and um, this is um, this is uh, showing the different outbreaks that had happened due to the uh, sars corona virus in 2002 it was sars corona virus 1 and the reservoirs were bad domesticated and so the transmission was from bad to domesticated animals to man and the case fatality rate was 10% when compared to that now it is comparatively very less the case fatality rate is 3.7 percentage but the morbidity rate is very very high so in 2012 mers corona virus had happened bad to camel to man and there also the case fatality rate is 34 percentage and in 2019 now the sars corona virus 2 that is the covid 19 and um, bat to pangolin to man and you know what so the studies are going on the role of uh, pangolin and all is under research and a lot of research work is going on to uh, to study the uh, reservoirs about the reservoirs and all throughout the globe the studies are going on and here the mortality rate is comparatively very less it is about 3.7 percentage but the morbidity rate is very very high the name corona means it is crown shaped due to the typical appearance of this uh, corona virus it is uh, called it has got this particular name crown shaped appearance due to the arrangement of its spikes of protein and um, you can see the bats the pangolin so covid 19 update every day we have seen in newspaper the daily updates of this particular disease so um, actually the who declared uh, the covid 19 as a public health emergency of international concern in 30 on 30th of january 2020 and it was declared as a pandemic outbreak that means pandemic means it's affecting the different continent different species of uh, animals human beings that are like that it is pandemic outbreak on 11th of march 2020 it was uh, it was declared as a pandemic outbreak 
and this is the present um, situation total uh, top four countries in covid 19 outbreak and we have reached the, in the third position and uh, so day, day before yesterday we have reached into the third position so the global figure is morbidity is uh, 1 crore 1.1 crore crores and mortality is 5.311 5.311 lakhs and um, uh, so this is the top four countries first uh, comes the usa then brazil and india 6.97 crores and um, death mortality rate is 19700 next comes the russia and we are also moving very fast and um, uh, crossing many many countries the mode of transmission now everybody knows about the mode of transmission how to what to do to control and all all are aware about that but still the disease is transmitting like anything even the school children small children also knows how to how to how it is getting transmitted and all through the sneeze and cough by the infected person uh, through the hands contaminated hands and all the virus gets transmitted and um, so this is very important regarding the um, virus, coronavirus, the COVID-19 outbreak, uh, pandemic virus. So this is the reproductive number or called as the R0, R0. That means the expected number of the cases directly generated by one person per population where all individuals are susceptible to infect. It depends upon the duration of the infectivity of the affected patient and um, this r not is uh, in in case of uh, corona it are not as um, uh, varying from 1.4 to 3.9 and uh, in case of this uh, you can uh, you can just uh, see in case of mers uh, mers it is um, it is comparatively less and this uh, corona it is uh, two, two, two to three corona uh, covid 19 it is uh, two to three and uh, next is the series interval time between the start of the symptoms in the primary patient and onset of symptoms in the receiving patient that is the infectee so time gap between the infector and the infected it is two to four days and the incubation period time in number of days or moments of exposure to an infectious agent and the signs and symptoms of the disease appears and this uh, this is uh, 2 to 14 days and in general it is um, 5.2 days and may extend up to 30 days so this is the risk uh, actually this shows the risk the susceptibility rate uh, for the COVID-19 age 65 to 75 years it has 2 to 5 percentage children and all are comparatively comparatively resistant age 75 to 85 years it is 4 to 10 percent age over 85 years it is more than 10 percent and the patients with cardiac diseases it is 10.6 percent lung diseases it is 7.3 percent diabetes 6.3 percent and cancer or immunosuppression the risk uh, is 5.6 percent signs and symptoms we all know very well fever tiredness dry cough these are the common symptoms and less common symptoms include the sore throat loss of taste and smell it is considered as a pathognomonic uh, sign in case of covid 19 and the serious symptoms include the shortness of breath one in six and chest pain and uh, loss of speech or movement these are uh, these occur in the uh, in the um, later stages of the disease and um, this shows the management of COVID-19 patients. Home management is required for the asymptomatic positive persons and also patients with mild to moderate symptoms. Uh, whereas the hospitalization is a must for those patients with the cardiorespiratory symptoms, comorbid and risky patients, high and continuous fever, pregnant ladies and those under the immunosuppression and also very small child. So the prevention, safe practices in the community, hand hygiene, then respiratory hygiene, wearing mask. Now it has become a practice, and uh, for one year we have to go, we have to do this practice. It seems that is as per the government rule. Then social distancing, minimum of um, uh, six feet that is required, and high risk group are the older age groups and all, and they have to be very very careful and there are so many do's and don'ts in case of corona outbreak have close and intimate contacts with anyone if you are experiencing cough and fever avoid contact 
then touching of eyes, nose and mouth and spit in the public, these things should be avoided. There are so many do's and so many don'ts which you are all aware. So that is about the COVID-19, COVID-19. Then coming to the prevention and control of this uh, emerging zoonosis, Prevention and control of emerging zoonosis, the disease surveillance system capable of early detection of the disease in animals and humans that is very, very important and adequate infrastructure and manpower to investigate outbreaks in the field. Laboratories equipped with recent and quick diagnostic tests, fostering of links between human health and animal health to ensure the effective management of zoonosis. Then research into factors associated with the emergence, then training programs for epidemiologists, researchers, laboratory workers, and the clinicians, then effective communication strategies, and global outbreak alert and response network coordinated by the World Health Organization. Ensure rapid deployment of the technical assistance and contribute to long-term epidemic preparedness and capacity building disease in general about the control of the disease and uh, uh, there's a six mantras for fighting this emerging infectious diseases include awareness among the public including the farmers that is very very important the people should be made aware of the particular uh, emerging infectious diseases then only they can go for the control measures the other one or uh, they can uh, take appropriate um, action to control or to prevent the disease then the administrative and the political will then that there should be proper support from the administrative, then the society support, international collaboration, then the professional commitment, adequate funding should be there, and one health approach that is one of the most important approach that we have to you know, take care of for the control of the zoonotic diseases, especially. So the one health that means the global collaborative multidisciplinary effort to promote humans, animals, and environmental health. That is the One Health approach. And we have our, our, our One Health Center um, um, at Cookwood. Uh, so this, uh, actually, this is very, this particular approach is very, very important to control the zoonotic diseases, especially. So we have to coordinate the activities of all the concerned um, branches to control the zoonotic diseases. Uh, so that is a, and um, we know very little and yet it is astonishing that we know so much and still more astonishing that so little knowledge can give so much of power so this is by the bernard russell thank you i hope uh, it was audible in between i couldn't uh, so